Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. As we all know that Microsoft has released DP203 exam and this is going to replace DP200 and DP201. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. We will begin this session by understanding why is DP203 introduced. Once you get introduced to DP203, we will see who should take up this course. And then we will get to know the skills required for DP203. And finally, we will end this session by having a look at the topics which are newly introduced in DP203. I hope you all are clear with the agenda. Now let's get started. Now let's see why is DP203 introduced. As of now, there is a lot of overlap between DP200 and DP201. Almost 70 to 80 percent overlap and there is no point in giving two exams on the same learning objectives, right? So Microsoft initially released DP200 and DP201 certification exams. But on the basis of feedback received, they merged DP200 and DP201 exams and then they launched DP203 exam for Azure Data Engineer. DP203 certification is the next level version of implementing Azure Data Solution which is DP200 and designing an Azure Data Solution which is DP201. Now why you should give DP203 exam directly? First of all, you can save the exam fees. You had to take two exams, right? So you had to pay the fees for two separate exams. But now you can just give one single exam. So this is a major advantage, right? Secondly, you don't have to worry about upgrading the new certification. You are good for one year and you will have the upgraded version of the certificate. You might have a question in your mind that can I continue with DP200 and DP201? Yes, you can still consider taking DP200 and DP201 exams. First of all, these exams are still valid and available to give by June 30th, 2021. So if you are already preparing for this exam or if you have already given one of these exams, there is no point to stop here. I would suggest you to continue and finish DP200 and DP201 and then take your Azure Data Engineer certificate. And later, you can upgrade your exam to DP203 by giving a free online assessment. Now here you should consider Microsoft's new policy. All Microsoft certification exams are valid for one year. Before one year, you have to give an online free assessment to make sure that they remain valid. And this is also true for DP203. Even if you take DP203, within one year, again you have to give an online free assessment to make sure that your certification remains valid. Now let us get an overview on DP203 exam. In DP200 and DP201 exam, you don't need to know Python or Scala. But in case of DP203, there are many learning objectives which are directly referring to Python or Scala. You need to have a solid knowledge of data processing languages such as SQL, Python and Scala. You also need to understand parallel processing and data architecture patterns. Now let's see who should take this course. This course is designed for IT professionals who will learn how to implement various data platform technologies into solutions that are in line with business and technical requirements including on-premises, cloud and hybrid data scenarios incorporating both relational and no SQL data. So this course is ideal for anyone who wants to start a career in data analytics or is already working in the following roles like data engineers or data architects or data scientists or data analysts. So what are the roles and responsibilities of a data engineer? The main roles and responsibilities of a data engineer is to develop, test and maintain data architectures to keep data accessible and ready for analysis, right? So the key tasks would be to perform ETL activity, install data warehousing solutions, perform data modeling, data architecture construction and development. So what are the roles and responsibilities of a data architect? So guys, the main roles and responsibilities of a data architect is to develop data architecture to effectively capture, integrate, organize, centralize and maintain data. So the core responsibility of a data architect would be to design the solution of a warehouse, perform ETL activity, data architecture development and also the data modeling. So what are the roles and responsibilities of a data scientist? So data analysis, once it has been done, the volume and velocity reach a level requiring sophisticated technical skills. Core tasks of a data scientist would be data cleansing, processing, predictive modeling, machine learning, identifying questions, running different queries, applying statistical analysis, correlating disparate data, storytelling and visualization. 
Now, what are the roles and responsibilities of a data analyst? So the data analyst would process and interpret the data to get actionable insights for a company. The responsibilities would include data collection and processing, programming, machine learning, data wrangling, data visualization, and applying statistical analysis. So what is the average salary of data engineer? So the average salary for a fresher in United States is $86,820 per annum. The average salary for a fresher in India is 7,39,910 rupees per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in the United States is $1,18,502 per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in India is 15,25,827 rupees per annum. So what is the average salary of data architects? The average salary for a fresher in United States is $86,897 per annum. The average salary for a fresher in India is rupees per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in the United States is $1,22,343 per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in India is rupees per annum. So what is the average salary of data scientists? The average salary for a fresher in United States is $89,047 per annum. The average salary for a fresher in India is rupees per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in the United States is $1,18,644 per annum. Average salary for an experienced professional in India is rupees per annum. So what is the average salary of data analysts? The average salary for a fresher in United States is $59,441 per annum. The average salary for a fresher in India is rupees per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in United States is $68,952 per annum. The average salary for an experienced professional in India is rupees per annum. Now let's see what are the skills required for DP203 exam. So we will learn about storage, we will learn about processing, we will learn about monitoring and we will learn about security. So let's look into all of these a little more detail. Now let's talk about storage. So when we talk about storage, Microsoft provides different types of storage in Azure, right? So there can be non-relational storage or there can be relational storage. Now when we talk about data, there can be structured data or semi-structured data or unstructured data. So when we talk about non-relational storage, Microsoft provides Azure Cosmos DB which is NoSQL data store. We have Azure Data Lake store which is hyperscale repository for big data analytics workloads and Hadoop distributed file system for the cloud. And then we have blob storage which can store and access unstructured data for your most demanding workloads. Blob storage is very cheap to maintain. We can keep data in different ways. We can keep hot data. We can keep cool data and anything can be stored. When we talk about relational data storage, we have Microsoft Azure SQL database where we can store all our data in structured format, right? So we have Azure Synapse, which is a data warehouse storage. And we have an elastic pool, which is a collection of databases with a shared set of resources managed through a SQL database server. So when we talk about on-premises SQL servers, we have an SQL server where we can create multiple databases and in our databases, we can create either transactional database or SQL data warehouse. So Microsoft in the cloud platform, they have segregated their product. So if we are going for a transactional system, we typically use SQL database. And then if we are going for a data warehouse, we use Azure Synapse. Now what is this elastic pool? When we go for a transactional system, when we want to use scaling, we typically use elastic pool. So when I'm using an elastic pool on a SQL database, I can quickly scale up or scale down based on our requirement. Now what about processing? Think of it like ETL where we can process our data. So Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based ETL and data integration service that allows you to create data-driven workflows for orchestrating data movement and transforming data at scale, right? Using mapping data flows, we can analyze big data as well, even without writing a single line of code. So it is a code-free development environment for ETL. And then we have Azure Databricks. So Azure Databricks again is a big data cluster. It runs on Apache Spark where we can easily set up our Spark cluster without any need of our hardware. 
and we can run our code to analyze and visualize in big data. And then we have stream analytics. Stream analytics is used for event-based analysis or near real-time analysis. So for example, let's say if you have an IoT sensor which is sending data and you want to analyze that using stream analytics where we get the data from IoT and display in the Power BI dashboard. And then we have monitoring. So monitoring is a big part of Azure. So we have Azure monitor and we can integrate third party monitors in Azure as well. So we can integrate all these monitoring solutions. Let's take an example. So let's say I have an Azure data factory where I want to see what is going on in my Azure data factory, how my pipelines are running, are they failing or not? How much time are they taking? How much cost am I consuming? So I want a log of everything. I can create a log analytics dashboard. I can add it to my Azure data factory and I can see that in my dashboard. I can have an Azure monitor where I can see in a graphical way how my data factory is performing. So monitoring is very easy thing. And then we have security. Security is very important factor for the cloud. We have data masking and data encryption. So when we do any kind of data masking, we change the data which is coming from source to analyze it and then we decrypt the data to consume. And when we talk about encryption, we encrypt the data using cipher. Then again, we have to use reverse cipher to decrypt the data. So data masking and encryption are also available on Azure. When we talk about security, there are a lot of things like role-based access control, shared access signature, and many other things. Now let's take a look at the syllabus for DP203 exam. Majorly, we have four different sections. First one is design and implement data storage, which covers 40 to 45 percent of the exam. And then we have design and develop data processing, which covers 25 to 30 percent of the exam. And then we have design and implement data security, which covers 10 to 15 percent of the exam. And then finally, we have monitor and optimize data storage and data processing, which covers the remaining 10 to 15 percent of the exam. So the topics under design and implement data storage section are design a data storage structure, design a partition strategy, design the serving layer, implement a physical data storage structures, implement logical data structures, implement the serving layer. So the topics under design and develop data processing are ingest and transform data, design and develop a batch processing solution, design and develop a stream processing solution, manage batches and pipelines. So the topics under design and implement data security are design security for data policies and standards implement data security. So the topics under monitor and optimize data storage and data processing are monitor data storage and data processing, optimize and troubleshoot data storage and data processing. Now let's see what are the new topics added to DP203 which are not existing in DP200 and DP201. So the topics which are newly added to DP203 are designing partition strategy, design the serving layer, implement logical data structures, implement the serving layer, design and develop a stream processing solution, manage batches and pipeline. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on-job support. So if you want to become Microsoft Azure data engineer and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step-by-step -step training for you that includes hands-on labs including the exam preparation and most important part one year on-job support. So if you are interested in this program, I would highly recommend you to attend the free class which covers most of the topics like why and who should learn data platform on Azure cloud, data types, data stores, data ingestion, Azure data factory, Azure data bricks and many other topics. So if you are interested in this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash azurede02. You can also find the link in the description.